again, everyone. Today I am doing a renewed flip through of my fountain pen ink swatch book. This is long overdue because I haven't done a flip through in quite some time. I will put a link down below to my setup for this notebook. This is essentially the traveler's notebook where I keep all of my fountain pen ink swatches. I will do another flip through of the other elements besides the main swatch book in here, but that's going to be pretty short. So if you want to see more details, you can see that other video. So here, nothing much has changed. I just am keeping some little uh, booklets that have information about some of the inks in here. I have some stickers that are specific to ink. This is the little notebook where I keep all of my um, my list of what pens are inked with what. I have a lot of pens inked up at any given time. And uh, when I change out the ink or um, empty the ink and put new ink in, I'll go through and I'll cross off the original listing that I have in here and then I will write a new one. So that's that. And then this is the main swatch book, which I'm going to do a flip through here in a minute, but I'll show you a little bit about what's in the back here. So this is a little notebook that I got off of Etsy from an artist that was posting these with her art on them. Uh, this is kind of semi fountain pen friendly notebook paper, but really what I'm mostly using this for is to get a pen started or, you know, see if a pen works. And sometimes it's not even fountain pens that I'm testing in here, so it's fine. And then back here, I just have some information that was on some of the ink boxes that I had some of the information that I kind of wanted to keep to, just in case I needed to refer to it. So that's all that's back here. So let's go back to this main book. So this is from Taroko Shop, this notebook, and I believe it is the heavier Tomoe River paper uh, in the old Tomoe River paper, which is a little bit better for, in my opinion, for fountain pens. So, and I have finally put the title on the front and put my name in and the start date. And then I have created an index, which is really, really helpful. There's probably a few pages at the end where I still need to catch up on some things like indexing. And um, as you'll see, I've done some other things to some of the ink samples. So I'll show you that. But some of the pages at the end are probably uh, lagging behind. So I still need to do some things. But this has been really helpful to find particular inks that I'm looking for. And I think this will be enough room. This notebook came with this little index in the front. So I don't think that there'll be a page and a half more of ink brands that I'll have in here. At least I don't think so. So that should be enough. All right. So some of these inks that are in the beginning of the book will be duplicative. If you have seen the other video that I did flipping through this, uh, but there are some changes. Uh, I don't know if I had done this to all of the inks yet. And again, like I said, there might be a few pages lagging in the back, but I have tested each of these little uh, grid patterns with water to see how uh, water resistant the inks are. So you can see Lexington Gray is completely water resistant or, you know, I'd probably say waterproof. And I've also listed underneath, uh, I've, I've written pens that I have put this ink in before. So, uh, so that you can see sometimes inks will look very different depending on what pen they're in and how they're written. So I did want to kind of have a little bit of a sample. Obviously it's not going to be all, uh, encompassing because, you know, there might be several different pens that have fire and ice in them and they all may look different but I just wanted to have at least one example for each ink. So like here, I have this in my Franklin Kristoff 45 large with a Nagahara bold cursive italic. And as you can see, it looks very different from the sample that was written with a glass dip pen. And all of these swatches are made with an automatic pen and uh, in size A3 automatic pen, and then I use a glass dip pen for the writing. There are links to those items in the video that I link below. Okay, so here we have Robert Oster Fire and Ice, Diamine Steel Blue, Lex, uh, Noodler's Lexington Gray. You will see later on in the book that I have some Noodler's inks crossed out. Basically that's because I have decided that I am not going to ink pens with them anymore because they just, they're kind of a disaster. Like they do, they just don't work well. So that's why you'll see that. And there, there may be a couple of other things that I've crossed out. But uh, then we have Pilot Yamabuto, which is a favorite 
Um, and here I have Organic Studios Unicorn Blood. It is a sparkly ink. You can see a little bit of the sparkle if I go that way a little bit. Um, this one has been problematic. I have it in a Kueco, which actually got a little tainted by some ink that I had left in the feed. So that's probably not even an accurate description here. But uh, it, the sparkle really gunked up the, the works on this Kueco. So I may end up just cleaning it out and I'm not sure if this ink is really gonna work in many pens. I mean that, we'll, we'll see. I may try it in something else. Uh, Monteverde Joy. Organic Studios Aldous Huxley, which is one of my all-time favorite inks and is in my uh, Prussian Blue Diamond 588, which is kind of a perfect match for that. Uh, I don't know if it's been sold out forever at all kinds of places, so I don't know if they've stopped manufacturing it altogether, but I don't know. So this is Sailor 123. Sailor 162, Emerald de Chavour, which is uh, also lovingly known as Emerald of Chicken. You can see some of the shimmer there. Uh, Platinum Lavender Black, Platinum Citrus Black, Organic Studios Nitrogen, which I actually just put in a, in a Jin Hao Sparkling Sands pen. I think I may have spelled Jin Hao wrong, but in any case, we'll see how it holds up. I had Yama Budo, I think, in there before, and that was pretty staining, so we'll see. This is the first time I've ever put the nitrogen in a pen, so um, I've heard many people say to dilute it with other more well-behaved inks, but I haven't tried that yet. We'll, we'll see how it works and go from there. This is Diamine Smoke on the Water, Diamine Skull and Roses, and I'm turning it just a little bit so that you can see some of that sheen there. These are all pretty sheening. Uh, Monteverdi California Teal and Monteverdi Onyx I don't really use very much and um, I, I actually used to use it and then have since taken those inks out of the pens not because there was anything wrong with the ink necessarily it's just they're just not my favorite Monteverde is not my favorite um, it really depends on which line it's coming from some of them are okay but these I haven't been that crazy about. And I'm, I put a little question mark here just, just to see if I want to get rid of them. Uh, Robert Oster Thunderstorm, Organic Studios Oscar, which is a lovely one. That's one of my favorites. This is Organic Studio Henry David Thoreau, which I actually have not put in a pen yet. Uh, Twisby Pink. I did try out Twisby Pink in a pen and it turned out really, really light. So both this and the Prairie Green, I think might be a little too light for writing, unless I can find a pen that will um, not be not make the ink so shading like it is here. However, the Twisby Orange, the Sky Blue, and the Emerald Green, which I put in a pen before but don't have one currently, those, are, those three inks are all very nice from Twisby. This was the little box set that they have. I think you can still get that somewhere. Um, but uh, those two inks have just been a little light for my taste. And they're hard to read when you write with them. This is Twisby Royal Purple. Oh, I've also had this one in a, in a pen and it's, it's great as well. Faber-Castell, these are two by Faber-Castell. I was not really that crazy about these, so again, um, I just feel like they're a little too vanilla. I think that's it. And, and that's just not the kind of ink that I like to write with in pens. So again, I may end up getting rid of those. Uh, Diamine Oxblood, which is one of the first inks I ever purchased, and it's still a favorite. Diamine Purple Rain. And again, I'm trying to move it so you can see the shading, or the, um, not the shading, the uh, sheen. And then this is Diamine Oxford Blue, which is a favorite still. Uh, Diamine November Rain. And then these are the Noodlers inks that I have just determined are not usable. Uh, Krishna Goldfish Gold. This one, I think I was hoping that it would be a little bit more exciting, but it, it's not. <laughs> uh, Birmingham Rodman Pen. Uh, uh, Birmingham Pen Company Rodman Gun Gunpowder Tea, which is a lovely color. Uh, Monteverde Brown Sugar. I used to like this one, but uh, recently I found that it tends to gum up pens a little bit and uh, makes them, it, the ink tends to dry out pretty fast. So again, Noodler's Whiteness of the Whale. No thank you. <laughs> um, Dea Trementis Document White. This is one that I tend to mix with the other uh, Dea Trementis Document inks. Robert Ostard Hot Pink, a favorite. 
uh, Platinum Carbon Black, which is a favorite for when you need waterproof ink. As I did do the water test here and you can see it, it did not bleed at all. Same with this Diamine Registrar's uh, Blue Black ink, but this seems to be a little bit harder on pens, so I generally don't leave it in pens. Uh, Robert Oster Schwartz Rose and Barossa Gilt I have had in pens before and they kind of ended up getting um, clogged by the shimmer. So uh, here I'll move it again so you can see the shimmer on there. Um, they're really beautiful colors but I'm trying to figure out whether there are actually pens that I can put it in. Robert Oster Viola and I actually found a pen that made this show up really well. I'm super happy about that. Uh, this is Robert Oster Gold Antica, which is a favorite. Diamine Iridescent. These are all the iridescents, these four. This is Robert, Philip, Maureen, and Christine. I don't currently have Philip and Christine in a pen. These are really staining inks, so um, I don't like to leave them in pens for a long period of time. Uh, this one actually, <laughs> these two, it's been in those pens for a little while, but they have really good sealing mechanisms, so I'm not too worried about them drying out. This is Sailor uh, Shikiori Rikyu Cha, which is actually a favorite. I, again, just when I started doing the documenting of different pens, I didn't happen to have this in a pen, but I have used it in many pens and it's great ink. This is Sailor Haha. I have, again, found a combination where I can see the ink pretty well. And uh, this is Neko Yanagi, which also can be light depending on the pen that you have it in. This is Robert Oster's Aster Quizza Rot which is a really beautiful dark red color. This is another one of my favorites. Color Traveler, Time for Whiskey. And I have this in my Pelican highlighter. Currently, um, I've tried a few different inks in, in that double broad nib, and I'm thinking at this point that any skips or hard starts may just be due to the uh, nib itself. I think it may have a little bit of baby's bottom. So I'm trying not to hold that against the inks that were in it. Uh, Tono and Limbs, number four. I had, I have a little question mark. Uh, I was having a hard time with flow on this one. I am going to try, with some of the pens that I had a harder flow, I'm going to try the um, Van Ness Liquid Lightning and see if that helps before I, I resort to getting rid of them because I do like the colors. This is Vinta Peria and Vinta Serena. I did find a pen which this works well in. Um, I'm hoping to find the same for that one. Uh, Ackerman Ver Verhout Violet, which is a really dark purple, beautiful purple. Uh, I have had this in pens before and I really like it. It's just it's not updated now. This is Sailor Epinard, which is lovely. It works really great in pens that where you need a really wet flow because this is a super wet ink. And this is Sailor Pesh, and I have put this in my Omas, my vintage Omas, and yet again, I am not happy with the ink. I think I just need to put a vanilla ink in it that's fairly dark and go with that. <laughs> this is Robert Ars Oster Carbon Fire, which doesn't have a whole lot of sheen, if any. Um, there are a few that, like, the sheen is elusive, uh, and it may just be the paper here or how I applied it. Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, which is a great brown, Troublemaker Abalone and Troublemaker Petrichor, both which are way more interesting in the little uh, square swatch than they are in writing. They tend to be a little bit bland, I find. Uh, this is Ackerman SBRE Brown, which is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite browns. These are Diatramentus document inks in black, brown, fog gray, and urban gray. These are standards that I use for sketching. Robert Oster Great Southern Ocean, which is a really beautiful dark teal color. You can see how different it looks in this giant music nib here. It's another noodlers that I'm just not, I'm either going to get rid of or use for art or, or something like that. This is uh, Sailor Yamadori, which is another one of my favorites. Sailor 970. Colorverse Dirty Rose, which is actually not Dirty Rose, it's Dirty Red. I wrote that wrong. <laughs> uh, Van Diemen's Blackened Seas. This one, uh, depending on the pen that I have it in, sometimes it's been a little long drying on the paper. So just something to be aware of with that ink. Sailor 653, which is one that I am consistently using in a couple of different pens, and I love it. I may have to get another bottle of that. It may be the first, the first second bottle of any ink where I've actually used up the bottle. 
uh, Krishna Pakaza. I did have this in some pens. It seemed to flow okay, but it seemed a little bit sticky. So I'm not sure. Um, I'm, I'm just not going to leave it in pens for a long period of time. That's probably the best way to do that. Krishna inks here again, bronze leaf and yellow valley, Monteverde cookie, ice cookie. I had a flow problem with this. And again, I might try the liquid lightning there. This is Mont Blanc James Dean Rebel Red, which I'm really, really loving as a color. And the Mont Blanc inks, I had not tried them for the longest time. And uh, I finally tried them recently and uh, I love them. Uh, some of them can be a little expensive though, which is the, the sad part. So this is Platinum Pigmented Sepia, which as you can see is a permanent ink. This is Ink Institute Cat at Dusk, which writes really lightly, although the, the pen that I have it in works fairly well. And I would say this is semi-permanent. You're gonna get a little bit of bleed, but it's, it's for the most part gonna stay where you put it. KWZ Sheen Machine, you can see that super duper sheen. I think I might've gotten a little bit of water on here and that's what this drop is. This is Pilot called Pecky, which is one of my favorites. This is Ink Institute Jade Vine, which tends to write a little light, but I'm pretty happy with it in the Kueco that I have it in. And uh, Linen Toolbar Atmospheric Cloudy Day is actually one that has been a surprise to me. I have it in a pen that I have a needlepoint nib in now, and it is completely permanent, and it's great for sketching and for just regular writing. It flows really well. It's a very well-behaved permanent ink. So I highly recommend it. Any, I, um, I haven't tried the other permanent inks in this uh, product line from Lennon Toolbar, but I would hope that they have the same, the same attributes. So this is another Lennon Toolbar. It's my very, very favorite Wenshan, Wenshan Puchang Tea, which I have in my Pelican M800. And I actually have put it in another pen. Uh, if you need another, this is another one where if you need a wet ink, it's great for that. It is very matte when it dries though. That's something to know. Um, some of these, you know, you're not gonna get any sheen whatsoever. It's very, very matte looking when it dries. This is Sailor 280, lovely. Here are a couple of Birmingham inks. This is in Waterfront Dusk, which is water soluble. And then Iron Girder, which is waterproof, although I would say it's more water resistant. You get a little bit of bleed, but it's not too bad. Um, Kala Gemstone inks both in Star Garnet and Spectralite. This is supposed to be waterproof, but this was after 30 minutes and it was clearly not waterproof. And I left it uh, for a day and the Star Garnet uh, was a little bit more waterproof after a day and the Spectralite was still not waterproof. So I would just note that about these. They're not actually waterproof even though they are pigment inks. This is Three Oysters Black Moss, which is a great ink. Pannonia Pelican Green. This is another wet ink. It's great for fine nibs and if you need a wet ink. And uh, this is, it's hard to read. It's the Kakimori Pigment Ink Lichen, and this is waterproof. And I've put it in a double-sided pen BBS pen, which I haven't shown on the channel yet, but I will at some point. It, it works great. It flows beautifully. I, I was This is another one that I was really, really surprised about. This is one of my favorites, Kobe number 57. Lamy Turquoise, this is one that runs really, really dry. So that's something to note. So does the Pelican 4001 Brilliant Brown. But uh, you just need to have the right pen for it. And I seem to have magically found the right pen and it works great in this Retro 51 with a medium nib. This is Kyo no Oto Kokiero which is really beautiful, but will come off, come off either super light or, you know, more dark, depending on the pen and the flow. And this is Sailor, Sailor's Sailor. <laughs> this is actually one of my favorite blues these days. Uh, this is Tachia Navy Blue Jeans, and you can see that has quite a bit of sheen to it. Another one of my favorites. Uh, most of my favorites are water soluble. That's just the way it goes. Water, uh, Waterman Mysterious Blue, which I've really come around to. This is Robert Oster Sydney Lavender. Always Ro Robert Oster, I love, but they do tend to run slightly dry. 
uh, I think I've said this on the channel before when I first started using them I actually thought they ran wet it might have just been the first couple of inks that I got from them but I would say consistently on the whole they run a little bit more dry so that's something to know about those as well diamine mold wine and on the whole diamine run tends to run a little bit wetter than other inks Franklin Christoph Urushi Red, which is another favorite. I have so many favorites. <laughs> uh, Birmingham Pen Company, the, these four are Birmingham. This is Gamboge. Um, I put it in a vintage pen and it was just so light in writing with it and it, the shading was pretty extreme. So this is one that I'll probably either have to find the right pen for or, you know, it might end up going to the wayside. This is projector film. Uh, this, I think this ink ended up uh, getting tainted once again with whatever was left over in the feed. I clean out my pens pretty well, but you know, sometimes you have a really strong ink in there beforehand and it tends to uh, taint the ink that you're putting in. And this, so for example, because of that, I would not empty this pen back into the ink bottle. Um, I, if I were going to switch out before using all the ink, I would indeed just empty the ink out and throw it away. So this is Amber Ale, which is lovely, but uh, I've noticed in very thick uh, nibs or uh, nibs that run really wet, it tends to bleed on the page. Some of the Birmingham inks are prone to that. This is Lichen Watermark which is another lovely one. This is Diamine Polar Glow from the Blue series, which was in the um, uh, the Inkvent calendar in 2019. This is J. Herban Vert Atlantide, which I don't think I ever swatched for you all on the channel. I just put it in here on my own. You can see there's a little bit of silver shimmer in there, which is really beautiful. Um, it actually flows really well, and I have not had any issues with clogging with this particular shimmer, at least not in this pen. So that's that's great. This is Kobe number 52. This is the second Kobe ink I've purchased that's just amazing. The flow is really, really good, not too wet, not too dry. And these are all the Diamine Guitar series, this one as well. I ended up getting the blue one as well. I, I accidentally put the wrong pen <laughs> there that was for this one. This one's Pelham Blue. Honey Burst, Desert Burst, Tobacco bur Sunburst, and Cherry Sunburst. And I found that I love all of these inks. Uh, I'd say if I had to pick one that I wasn't as crazy about, it would be the Tobacco Sunburst. But I would say every other one I have been just amazed with. Sailor Manyo Ume, Sailor Manyo Yomagi. These two are really, really beautiful. I've really been hitting it out of the park with inks that I like lately. Uh, this is Mont Blanc uh, Cobalt Violet, which I got from Endless Pens at a really great discount uh, because normally I think this bottle runs like $70 or something crazy like that. I did not buy it for that much. It may have been like $30, which is still on the high end for uh, ink, in my opinion, but, uh, but it's really beautiful. And I have it in my Lavender Kaweco Sport, and it goes really well. And then we have a Twisby Midnight Blue, which does have some sheen to it. This is Rora and Klingner, Verdigris. This is a beautiful, beautiful dark teal. Colorverse Quasar. You know, I, eh, I'm i just okay on that ink. It's nice, but I, you know, I don't have, it's not really doing it for me. <laughs> it's just okay. This is Monteverde Cherry Danish, which runs very, very wet. And uh, I'm sort of torn on this one. It seems to flow well some days and then other days it doesn't. So I don't know about that yet. I need to do some more testing. Diamine Sherwood Green, which is lovely, but for a diamine ink tends to run a little dry, which is kind of interesting. Uh, Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue, lovely. Papier Plume Bayou Nightfall. This is my first ever Papier Plume ink. And it's okay, it has a little bit of, um, I feel like the surface tension on this ink is really high, meaning it has, has a little bit of flow issues, so I might again use the white lightning on that one. And so this is another super expensive ink. I actually did not buy this on sale, and I would not repeat it. Uh, <laughs> this is Mont Blanc's James Purdy and Sons Single Malt. So it is a scented ink. It's one of the only scented inks that I have in my collection, and it smells like single malt whiskey. And the smell is just okay. To me, I find it slightly alcoholic smelling. Uh, but you know, and the and the um, the the orangish brown is pretty, 
but I prefer SBRE Brown by Ackerman. So I would spend the money on that ink over this one, in my opinion, unless this shade is something that you really, really like. And some people go crazy for it, but I mean, I'll use it all, but it was a little disappointing to spend so much on a bottle of ink because so many people had raved about it and then to get it and it's just like, eh, it's okay. At least the smell is not off-putting because that would be a real bummer. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, the smell is fine. Um, it just smells like I had a drink <laughs> at my desk. <laughs> so this is Birmingham Cold Steel. Even though this uh, was bleeding a little bit here, it actually did not bleed in this Parker 45 vintage pen. Uh, and the reason why I'm using some of the Birmingham inks in vintage pens is they tend to flow pretty well, like they tend to be wet flowing, although I ha they have a couple of different categories now, but, uh, and, and they seem to be fairly gentle on pens from my experience. And then this is Sailor Seboku, and this is supposed to be permanent, but I would say that it's, again, probably water resistant. There's a little bit of ink that ended up um, going places here. Um, this, this, I actually put a, um, my Esterbrook pocket pen, I put this in there and then I'm associating that with my wallet so that if I ever do have to sign a check or something, it's at least mostly permanent ink. Uh, Diamine Writer's Blood, love it. That's all I have to say about that. Uh, Pelican 4001 Royal Blue, a little boring. Uh, it came with a pen, so that's why I have it. Birmingham Ultramarine, uh, Birmingham Voltaic Arc, Birmingham Jade Inferno, and Tesla Coil. These are all part of the new Sheening series by Birmingham. I, um, I will, well, I won't link to the video, but I recently on the channel, I did do a swatching of these if you'd like to see that. And it looks like that's where I stopped with the water test. So this last page has, I have not done that yet. So this is Robert Oster Lake of Fire, Diamine Fire Embers, which is again from the uh, Blue series. This, uh, so this and two other inks are the only inks that I've gotten. I'll, I'll show you when I go through those in the back. Um, are the only, I've only gotten three inks from that collection is what I was trying to say. This is Monteverde Purple Rain, Franklin Kristoff Honeycomb and Shop Denim Blues. Uh, Franklin Kristoff ink has really been a surprise. It's fantastic. <laughs> um, so I'm not, well, I'm not going to go through all these ink samples that I have back here. Uh, these are just regular samples. They are in the prior flip through that I did of this notebook that I would say go ahead and do a search for on my channel if you want to find those. Um, I've actually been trying to use a lot of the samples and then if I hate them, <laughs> Thank goodness I got a sample, right? Um, and if I love them, I tend to buy a bottle. So I had a little ink wish list here. I've, I've gotten a lot of them. Um, so I just have a couple left. And uh, as my tastes change, you know, I may, I may end up not getting those at all. So these are all from the Inkvent calendar from 2019. So this is Blue Peppermint, Candy Cane, Snowstorm, Polar Glow, this is one that I got a whole bottle of, so I put a little heart by it. And that's a super sheener for sure. It's a lovely color. Triple Chocolate, Ho Ho Ho, Mistletoe, and Gold Star. Of these, Mistletoe I tried in a pen and it was super, super dry. You can even tell from the sample that it looks pretty dry. Um, dry inks from Diamine are really the, um, the exception. They are not the norm. So that was a little strange about that one. And I think Gold Star actually has some shimmer in it. Some of these are shimmer, some of these are sheening, some of these are just plain old regular. Snowstorm does have uh, some shimmer in it. I've actually been using this one in a stub nib, the Mont Monteverde Ritma, and it's been working really well. So um, at some point I may end up getting a full bottle of that too. I just need to write with it a little bit more. This is Nutcracker, Winter Miracle, Elf, Noel, and some of them are sheening and uh, sparkly. I think Winter Miracle is one of those. And then this is Mold Wine. So I've gotten a full bottle of the Mold Wine. Jack Frost, Festive Cheer, Seasons Greetings. I also really like the Seasons Greetings. It's just sheening, not uh, shimmer. Uh, but I have the, the Diamine uh, Iridescent inks are very similar to this color. There's one that's very similar to this. So I don't uh, think I'll get a bottle of that. 
poinsettia, holly, gingerbread, midnight hour. Midnight hour uh, is super sheening and dark. Fire embers. This is the one that uh, I got a full bottle of. I do think that my small bottle is a little bit more dynamic than the full bottle, but maybe I'll try shaking that one up a little bit more and see. Solstice is one that is sheening and shimmer. It's pretty. I have not tried that in a pen yet. Roasted chestnut, purple bow, and then happy holidays. So happy holidays is sheening and uh, sparkly as well. I haven't tried that in a pen either. And then this is one that my husband got me for Christmas. It's Krishna Christmas Eve, which is a beautiful, beautiful ink. I think he got inspired by <laughs> the Inkvent calendar and got me that. So this uh, notebook, the Taroko Shop notebook, does have these little uh, spots for inks, ink samples in the back, which is kind of nice, which is why I started with this, um, the Christmas colors back here. Uh, but this would obviously not be enough to do all of the samples. Okay, well, I'm at 30 minutes, a little over, uh, and we're going to stop there. So that's going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time. But in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.